Yo, what is going on, y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson, and we are back with another VV Any Comey video. And this one, I'm going to be showing you all a piece of the interview that I did with Trevor just yesterday. Um, and I'm sorry, it's one particular part that I wanted to show you all, but I really could not find it. So the whole video can be found on the Patreon, but this this is going to be interesting, and it could cause an uproar in the community because he has a very controversial opinion that he does not believe the Masters Collectors Program will work. And it actually makes sense as to why he does not believe that. So that's in the full interview over on the Patreon. But within this video, he's going to actually be breaking down why NFT gaming doesn't work um, and why if someone makes it work, whoever makes it work will still lose and um, how easy it is to actually implement NFTs in the game, which is very, very bullish for a company like Vivi because, I mean, we definitely have NFTs, you know? I mean, we we have that. So, um the, the the ease of actually putting it in a game will shock you and i think that is very very bullish on that front so yeah it, it was like it was an amazing interview um i wish i could have found the part for you all that i wanted to but i mean i i have i had another interview today i had i have another interview with a whale um later this week and it's just i have all this footage so yeah i just couldn't find it man i couldn't find it my bad so shout out to everybody on the patreon everybody in the discord um a lot more content coming i've been working man your boy has been working so yeah that being said, hopefully you all enjoy this video. If you didn't get into it, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out. If it's skins, all you basically have to do is you're making the content anyway, and it's in a database. You basically need to build a tool where someone can connect their wallet that owns the NFT. Um, it can read the token IDs in the wallet and understand, oh, that token ID is associated with this content serve that content to the user in the game. Like that effectively accomplishes the end user experience of NFTs in game, that's not that much work. <laughs> it really isn't. That's like there are, and no, and uh, and like I worked at Riot. I know how many engineers they have. That like just the platform team alone is 200 people. Be sure to check out my Patreon for weekly exclusive interviews, extra content on VV and Omi, and building generational wealth, as well as money management tips from experienced whales. So is that why you you? you clung to the nft space the way you have do you see that as like the direction game in this head man like if a company when a company finally comes out and does it right do you see that this is the new thing or i th honestly no but for a very for a very unique reason which is i don't think the challenge the challenge with making nft gaming work isn't on the nft side the challenge is on the game side and it always is think of it from the perspective of an existing game let's say um fine let's say that an nft battle royale game comes out if you're epic games or your activision blizzard both of which have or your ea with apex legends by the way that's three games each of which has made over a billion dollars in their lifetime like and and like at like and for like the case of Fortnite and now uh, Activision like Fortnite makes three and a half to four billion dollars a year. COD Warzone makes about three billion dollars a year. These are massive, massive cash cows that throw off a shitload of money, and it's just they're extremely successful game franchise games. Um, and Apex Legends is like it's not as big as those, but Apex Legends makes five hundred million dollars a year. Like to think it's the small title, it's still making half a billion a year. That's not really that small. Um, but for them, they've built these games that people love and keep wanting to go into. And if you're just selling content and, and all that's really different, if someone were to make a knockoff, like if someone were to make Fortnite, but with NFTs, what's the difference from Fortnite? Just the NFT thing. It's just a business model change. If all you're changing is the business model and you make it and you make that business model work, everybody will just copy you because the hard part isn't actually the business model. The hard part is making a game that can grab and hold on to audience in the face of other games entering the space. And if all you have to your name is basically, if all your game is, is basically just Fortnite, but with NFTs, well, guess who can do Fortnite with NFTs better than you can? It's Fortnite. <laughs> so... I actually think the goal to make NFT gaming work isn't in building a, a NFT game. I think the goal is to build a great game and just happens to have NFTs in it. And if you can make that work and prove it out and on the margin, NFTs are making your game more financially successful for the audience size. 
then people will start copying what you're doing on the business model. But what they won't do is copy your game. They'll just copy your business model. And what you'll see if that happens is um, the market for NFTs and games go from basically nothing to every game has them within two years. Yeah. So you think I, that um, you think do you do do you see a company like um, Epic Games or something like that actually coming into the space and bringing Fortnite into the space? Because isn't that kind of like more profitable for them in a way if they um i think every single one of them's in a way actually i don't even think i've had conversations with i i had a conversation with a guy at bethesda last week like the, the company that invented dlc and microtransactions or at least that's what they joke um that they did with like oblivion paid horse armor <laughs> like they still get shit for that 15 almost 20 years later but like their whole lot of approach is it's a wait and see approach because they know that they have the better IP and the bigger games. And if someone makes this work, they'll be in there so fast. And what you'll see is everything will be NFTs. Yeah, I've been seeing. Um, I've been but seeing. I don't think that's a question of when, but I'm not convinced that's a question of when yet. I'm still think we're at the if that happens stage. If, oh, you're not. You're not seeing any potential anything what about um have you been looking at what alluvium has been doing is yeah and i think alluvium is a case for why it doesn't work actually more than why it does really <laughs> <laughs> yeah because all alluvium is is a knockoff of team fight tactics like that's what it is yeah. and yeah they've raised a ton of money but and then they did their land sale i was actually more on board until they did their land sale their land sale like bothered me really what, what was wrong with it because they have if they've made so much money already with that i mean they raised a lot of money like from investment from like outside and they use that to build up a lot of audience and start building a game and what they have is they have a private beta i don't even know if it's a beta it might be a private alpha whatever it is they don't have a launched game at all and they just raise and then they did a land sale to raise like it was supposed to up, up to like a quarter billion dollars i think where they ended up after the dutch dutch auction they raised about 70 million which is respectable. It's a lot of, it's a shitload of money. It's enough to definitely build a triple A game. Uh, not, uh, but the problem is that whole market of auto battlers is saturated already. And the whole market is probably only worth a quarter billion dollars. And the fact that they were trying to raise that, like they were trying to raise more market money than the entire market was worth in a year with a title that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. And and they didn't raise that, but they raised a third, they raised 33% of that market of, of that yearly revenue. That's, that's not in line with a game that does, that isn't playable. Like <laughs> TFT has tens of millions of monthly active users and makes hundreds of millions of dollars. And then there are other games and it's available globally right now. You can go play it for free. And that game is only worth a quarter billion a year. And you think you can go out and raise that much on your game that doesn't exist. It's just not aligned with the reality of that space. Yeah. And to me, it's taking advantage of an uninformed investor. I'm not going to lie. That's what that felt like. That, that actually makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I know. Sorry to fud anybody who bought Alluvium. <laughs> but like, I mean, the, the at least the land sale, that side of it just kind of bothered me. It's also like where so much of what they're promising is like a percentage of revenue. And I like that, or at least that's what I heard they're promising. And to me, that's like, yeah, that that's that's valuable if the game works, but you're basically at that point, you're like basically doing everything a security would do without giving someone share in the company. Um, and it's just like it's just a little it's just sh a little shady to me at that sense. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think I guess the larger point is like, yeah, they're the biggest player in the space. But I don't know what they've built that if they make it work, I don't know how they stop Riot Games or Tencent from copying them. And then if that happens, I don't know how they stop Riot Games from uh, winning that market because there's already such a bigger game with such a massive audience. Do you think that is that, um, I don't know if you how, how much you know about the coding behind the scenes and stuff like that, but do you think that it's that easy for them to just implement NFTs and stuff into their ecosystems? Like, is it, would it be simple for them to do? If you were to, if it, it depends on how deeply integrated it, it is. If the goal is to sell content that happens to be an NFT, like just sell in game, like skins or something that are NFT or even like items in the game that you can only get as NFT items. 
changes the game design a little bit. If it's skins, all you basically have to do is you're making the content anyway, and it's in a database. You basically need to build a tool where someone can connect their wallet that owns the NFT. Um, it can read the token IDs in the wallet and understand, oh, that token ID is associated with this content serve that content to the user in the game. Like that effectively accomplishes the end user experience of NFTs in game. That's not that much work. <laughs> it really isn't. That's like, there are, and no, and uh, and like, I worked at Riot. I know how many engineers they have. The, like just the platform team alone is 200 people. The League of Legends core team is 500 people. The, the uh, TFT team is about 100 people. The Legends of Retire team is about 100 people. The Valor team is probably up to 300 people. Like they have literally thousands of people at that studio and they're all extremely talented engineers. They can figure this one out and do it fairly quickly. Wow. Yeah, that, that actually is scary when you put it yeah. that way. Yeah, it's like I don't think people realize how big these companies are and how strong, just how powerful their their uh, engineering and tech teams are. Like League of Legends, <clears throat> League of Legends, I know is five hundred people. The whole company is about three thousand across all their games and all their publishing and all their tech and platforms. They're part of Tencent, which has probably. 10,000 plus engineers like ready to go on anything that they want to throw them at. And that's just the League of Legends 10 cent side. If you're a Call of Duty, for example, across all the studios, there's probably 1,500 people working on Call of Duty at one time, at any one time across all their products. Like to think that it would be hard for these guys to build in, connect your wallet and sync into their games are just, they're, they're, they're wrong. <laughs> it's not that hard. I mean, what that means is that in, to me, what that means is investing in these companies early is not about an nft investment it's about a game company and a game studio investment and understanding what the game product is and how it fits into the market in a way that's differentiated against the incumbents um if you if a, if someone who's into nfts has the experience and the confidence to do that kind of due diligence which is much harder than just the nft side of things then yeah i would go for it um but I would almost, but for me, it's like, if you want to make money in the space, I think what you're going to be doing is like, once these other big studios are coming out with NFTs, like integrate into their games and the problems are solved, I would be looking to buy there because I think you're going to find much more success in your investment. And here we go that the not financial advice bullshit, but like, you're going to find much more success, I think, in your investment, if it's a Call of Duty NFT, than if you do, if it's the whatever like project xyz that just has announced because i mean it's such a bigger game 